The word angel comes from the Greek word angelos and means messenger. In the Bible, this is the form used in almost every mention of angels except one. In Luke 20, 36, where the phrase reads, equal unto the angels, angels are beings that are created as intermittent beings between God and man. They are created beings by God, making them lower. But Psalms 8, 5 states that man was made a little lower than the angels. There are more than 300 references to angels in the Bible. They play an important role and are seen in some of the most famous Bible stories, including the Christmas story. An angel is neither a god nor a human. Angels are spirits. They are ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation. The first mention of angels in the Bible is when Adam and Eve left the garden after the fall. They are banished from Eden, and Eden is protected by cherubim, angels that are depicted elsewhere as winged bulls or lions with human heads. Cherubim are symbolic attendants to places of the Lord's enthronement on earth in the Old Testament. They guard the Garden of Eden and the Ark of the Covenant. People had forgotten what cherubim signified by Jesus' time, and the historian Josephines wrote in the first century A.D., that no one can tell what they were like. Now archaeology has unearthed much of the forgotten past of the biblical world, and it is believed that a cherub was a small-winged, bearing lion with a human head, in other words, a sphinx. This was the winged creature most often portrayed in the Canaanite art, and Canaanite kings are often shown seated on thrones supported by two cherubim. The Israelites may have adapted the cherubim to make a throne for the invisible presence of God. Angels have three important responsibilities, to attend God's holy throne, to protect people, and to serve as messengers carrying special news or tidings. They are worshipful beings that serve God by carrying out His wishes through these three main roles. Daniel gives a prophetic picture of what attending the throne of the Almighty God appears like. The Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was as white as snow. The hair of his head was white like wool. A river of fire was flowing, coming out from before him. Thousands upon thousands attended him. Ten thousand times, ten thousand stood before him. Daniel 7, 9-10 Angels are all around God, worshiping Him. Guardian angels are spoken throughout the Bible. Abraham spoke of God sending his angel before his servant Elias as the steward went to seek out a wife for Abraham's son Isaac. Psalms 91, 11 through 12 also speaks of watchful angels. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. As messengers, the angels communicate God's will to us. They serve as rescuers, such as when Lot was saved from Sodom. They serve as rescuers, as barriers of great tidings. To instruct prophets, angels are meditators who pass along messages God has for His people. Hebrews 1.14 says angels are ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation. As such, they come to our aid and offer help where they can to make our lives better. They are spiritual beings that remain invisible. The heavenly host is not merely a bunch of angels. The term means an angel army. The heavenly host that came upon the shepherds when Jesus was born was singing and praising God, but they were a company of God's army of angels nonetheless. Jacob's vision depicts the angels as being lined up on an immense ladder that stretches between the earth and the heavens. God looks down and sees us and watches as the angels bring their messages from him. There is a heretical organization of angels, though it is uncertain exactly what they might look like. There are seven angels in God's presence that surround the throne. These angels are constantly worshiping their Creator. 
St. Denis the Areopagite wrote a treatise that claims there are defined levels and ranks of angels. However, his work was largely unaccepted except for that pertaining to choirs of angels. The church heartily accepts this idea, but does not make believing in varying levels of angels a requirement. Gregory the Great demonstrated what the early church believed concerning angels with his comments. There are nine orders of angels. He based this on the Apostle Paul's finding as well as other scriptures. St. Thomas, who was also from the early church, divided the angels into three hierarchies with three orders of angels in each. Where they are in terms of God himself is the main basis for the divisions. The seraphim, cherubim, and thrones are in the first one the dominations, virtues, and powers in the second, and the principalities, archangels, and angels are in the third and final hierarchy. Only two personal names for angels are given in the Bible, Michael and Gabriel. Other angels with personal names are given in the Apocrypha, such as Uriel and Jeremiel. Gabriel makes appearances in both the Old and New Testaments. He interprets Daniel's vision in the book of Daniel and also announces the births of John and Jesus to their respective parents. Michael is an archangel and a warrior in the angelic realm. He is the protector of Israel according to several references in the book of Daniel and one in the book of Revelation. Fallen angels are angels who have rebelled against God and lost their standing in heaven. They have not been cast into hell and they are under God's power, but they take orders from Satan. Revelations 12:7. The Nephilim are a people spoken of in Genesis 6. Some believe this people of great strength were the result of fallen angels marrying the daughters of men on earth to produce offspring of unusual size and strength. The Bible calls these people the heroes of old men of renown. God did not look with favor on the actions of these angels and their offspring were eventually wiped out with the flood. Satan is perhaps the most famous angel of all time. He is a fallen angel, one who was cast out of heaven after rebelling against God. Paul speaks of how Satan masquerades as an angel of light. In reality, Satan is the prince of darkness. A final battle between the good angels and the fallen angels is prophesied in Revelation 12, 7 through 9. And there was war in heaven. Michael, the archangel, and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. Christians will see angels on the last day. Matthew 24:31 states that God will send his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heavens to the other. Angels will escort believers into heaven and to the holy throne. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on my next video.